Hello and welcome to the second installment of the Orthograph webinar series. The topic today is fire investigation with the most advanced technology. My name is Zoltan Tut and over there we have a special guest today, Dr. Peter Mansi. Peter, could you introduce yourself? Yes, hello Zoltan and it's a pleasure to be on this webinar with you. My name is Peter Mansi and I am a partner of Fire Investigations UK um, based here in uh, London and throughout the UK. Um, I've been a fire investigator now for uh, 16, 17 years actually. Um, I was in the London Fire Brigade for just over 30 years and now run a consultancy uh, that carry out fire investigations uh, around the world um, and have been doing that now for five years. Perfect. And I see that you are a very enthusiastic orthograph uh, customer as well. <laughs> You've been using this software for more than a year now. I am. And th thanks to your help and support and your, your good YouTube videos that help us and all our team uh, use it successfully. Perfect. So what we are going to discuss during this uh, next 45 minutes is that, first of all, I'm going to show you the orthograph concept. I mean, you and the attendees. I'm going to show what the application, what we have looks like and how it acts. And after that, you are going to take over, Peter, and we, you are going to tell us more about how your customer, how your company is using the application for, for the uh, fire investigation purposes. And you would also discuss how your company transitioned from pen and paper to something more digital. Absolutely. First of all, let's, let's talk about the, the orthograph concept and uh, let's see how it works. What we have here, I mean, some of you might be already um, familiar with what we have, what we are developing, but just, just a short recap. The reason why we made orthograph is to make sure that people could document the built environment in a way that there would be no data loss and there would be no missing measurements. We originally made this for, for documenting uh, buildings for, for architects, but we realized that there are many other professions out there who would benefit from a tool which could uh, document the built environment into a format that could be reused. And that's where actually you come into the picture because you would, you would use it for, for something what we never expected people would do for documenting fire, fire, uh, fire scenes actually. Now, let me run over what we have here. This is a mobile application and that means that it's run, it runs on tablets and smartphones as well. The reason why we support these devices is that you can just simply take them to the scene together with a laser distance meter like this one, and then you can just quickly measure up the buildings. First thing you do with our software is that you draw the environment the way you see it. Once you have the, the building drawn, next thing you have to do is just to measure it up. So you don't have to go for the maximum level of accuracy in the beginning. You just have to get something which looks like the real thing. First measurement when you submit it is going to rescale the whole drawing and additional measurements are going to measure the wall that you are working on. So bit by bit, as you can see, you can build up your drawing. Now, once you have the, the measurements, the basic measurements, you can even get some diagonal measurements to distort the drawing into a shape that you want. But again, that's not compulsory. So you can decide to work with orthograph a very fast way, but you can also um, be a little bit slower and more accurate. Every segment that you see here could be adjusted. So all the walls could be adjusted for their length, height, and thickness values. So you can crank up the thickness any way you want. After that, you can add in the doors and windows because that's sort of these are the reference points of your measurements. Let's have a door here and let's have a window over there. These elements can be then moved around and modified and they could be measured any way you want. So one measurement on the location of this door and one measurement on the width. There you go. Regarding windows is the same story, only difference is that now you can even define the seal height as well. Once you are done with one room, you can add another one. And this is where uh, the application beca becomes more, uh, more interesting because if you are working in a very simple drawing, you can just simply tap on the pencil and draw the next location close to the first one. And therefore it attaches itself automatically. However, if you are going to work on a bit more complicated um, venue where you don't know where the walls actually align, then you can just sketch the components separately and later you can merge them. So just sketch a second room, add another door just like this, and eventually you can just push it all together. Now, this is the part when the measurement process starts from the beginning. So now you would again make measurements and if that is a little bit too tedious, you can bring in professional help with this device, this like a Disto D2, which is going to connect to our application wirelessly via Bluetooth. So that way, if I hook up the two together like this, 
And if I make now a measurement, let's say from here to there, and I measure from the back of the office to the other side of the office, then the number, what you see on the screen is going to get into the application straight away. So the same value you can see here. Also, if you have doors or windows or you want to measure anything else, you can, you can just use the, the laser to position them, just like that. So it's very fast, it's very accurate. Now, another thing that even at this stage of sketching, you can just simply zoom in to see some certain properties of the room. So if you are just only interested in the perimeters, the heights of the, of the surface values, then that's the way to go. And also you can just pull up an on-site report which would, tells you, which would tell you all about the, the room's properties. Now, once you're done with this survey, you would obviously want to use this data somehow. So there are many ways how you could get this data out of the system for further use. And let me show you a couple of uh, example files so you would see what you can expect if you do a survey with, with Orthograph. So first of all, we have a very comprehensive PDF room book, which would get you the, uh, all the rooms and surface calculations. After that, we would have an Excel sheet, which would get you all the, all the numbers, all the estimations, and all the notes that you took during the, the site visit. Also, you can decide to export the, the orthograph file into a so-called DXF format, which is uh, favored by CAD users, which would get you the dimensions and the, and the building parts as blocks. If, however, you are more into the uh, BIM um, sphere, then you can export the whole thing into an IFC format, which is a cutting edge building information modeling format, which would get you all the dimensions and the, the shape of the building actually, and the BIM parameters. So every single item here would have the data that you inserted on the scene. Because here's the, here's the great thing about the application. Everything you tap on would give you locational information, bits what you can modify. So if you add any kind of photos or, or notes or any, any length values, these would be here in the application. So that way, and this is where your, your perspective would be even more interesting. This way you can document the scene as you go and you are not walking away only with a floor plan, but also with a full documentation on the, on the scene. Once you have everything exported, you can just import it into any kind of application you are working with and, and keep on using it. But I think it's, uh, it's enough of me talking about what this thing can do. How about, Peter, you tell me what it, what it can do. Yeah, sure. F first of all, Zoltan, um, I'd just like to say that um, in our business, one of our most important, and one of the most important things we need to do is to document the fire scene. Um, and that includes, uh, as well as fo extensive photographs and video, um, even laser scanning at times, but it certainly involves sketching the scene from a single compartment, which I will show you in a moment to something a bit more complicated. And since we started our business five years ago, we were trying to get all of our team to utilize the same software, the same drawing package. Um, and there are lots out there, as, as you well know. And it was when we started Orthograph, it seemed um, a little bit too good to be true that we could actually uh, use a stylus or our finger on, a, on a, a tablet and sketch out the scene and get these accurate measurements. Mm -hmm. And um, I think all fire investigators are, are probably born cynical. Um, so <laughs> we thought we would certainly give it a try because it, it did seem like a, a good thing if we can get it working. Now, like uh, every... Um, bit of software, you need to overcome your fear of using it. And like anything, you need to practice with it. And this is where your assistance and the YouTube videos have certainly helped. And our team are spread out all across the United Kingdom and um, uh, overseas as well. So we, uh, sometimes difficult for us all to get together. So we have these similar conversations on Skype and we've all, uh, got through the learning curve together. And we're now moving on to more advanced use of, of mm -hmm. the app because there's a lot, lot more to it. The problem we've had in the past, as you'll see in a moment, is we're often at fire scenes by ourselves. So uh, just measuring a normal room can be difficult enough in with all the lights on and yes. uh, when it's clean and tidy. But following a fire scene uh, where you've got partial structural collapse you've got burnt debris in the floor uh, some of the plasters off the wall it's really difficult if not impossible to do it by yourself 
And I know we could use a sketch and a laser measure and measure it on, but the orthograph application doesn't just save us time. Um, it's a more accurate drawing for our clients, and it saves our clients time. So instead of being there for an hour and a half doing a measuring and a drawing of a scene, you may be able to do it in 45 minutes. So, And you're only doing it once. You're not coming back yes. to the office and then transposing that hand sketch into something more acceptable for a report. Um, so that, that's why we found it so good, is that we can do this once, do it efficiently, do it accurately. And now I've started uh, um, measuring the apertures of a, a building and the sill heights and the ceiling heights. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. And the reason that's important for us is that should we want to do a reconstruction of a fire scene at a later date, the apertures, that's the doors and the windows or any other opening in the wall, even in between compartments, is critically important if you're going to do computer fire modelling because you need the most accurate data you can to put into that model. And this captures it. Uh, the levels of details that we need to, to capture is, as you'll see in a moment, I'll go through a short presentation, is normally the, the basic room dimensions in, in a 2D plan. Uh, we're now, um, not just for practice in sight, but for, for good, good practice and good habits, is measuring the, uh, the ceiling height and the apertures that are available. Um, we're, we're all at a stage at the moment, or most of us, where we will then create the plan drawing and then import that into um, a Word document mm -hmm. so that we can then use the line drawings and some of the shapes in the Word document to uh, overlay um, to, to fulfil our needs. However, uh, working with you, I know we're working on some more uh, um, items in the library and we, we're starting to use those more. And also, as you'll see in, in the presentation, one of our team just needed to recall one compartment, but to practice, he documented all the other com compartments on the ground floor to show how they can all uh, be sewn in together and give a good overall ground floor plan. And the next thing we need to do is develop uh, creating multiple floors. So we're getting there, Zoltan, I'm pleased to say, and it's looking <laughs> good. I'm guessing that there is a learning curve definitely with this one. How about you, you show us a couple of examples of what you've been doing with the, with the app? Sure. Um, what I've done is I've just put a, a few examples that uh, um, I've anonymized for obvious reasons uh, to show you, so to get to get the, the viewer, anybody who's listening to this, the background of what a fire scene looks like if they're, if they're not fire investigators, but they're interested in, in the product. Uh, but those that are fire investigators will more than appreciate the photographs and how easy it, it is once they've seen this to produce a joint. So if you want to go to the first um, uh, picture there. Yes. And here you can see um, uh, uh, it's a, a small utility room and there is, you can see the fire damage at high level and uh, the, the smoke, what we call the demarcation line on the back wall where you've got the, the sort and then the clean. And you can see that there's some, um, uh, what we call an acro prop, a, a metal support for the ceiling because it's structurally unsafe now without that. Yes. And it's a, a fairly basic small utility room, which if you had to measure that, you know, you're putting a tape measure up against dirty, soot-covered walls, um, some bits have fallen down. Uh, but uh, one of our colleagues used the orthograph, took him minutes to do, uh, used the laser measure that you recommended, and if you go to the next uh, yes. picture, you can see a basic layout of that floor plan, giving the, the apertures of the doors, the height, uh, the windows, and he's got the sill height in there as well. Um, so that, that's a very simple example, but that looks much better in a report than a hand-drawn sketch um, or, or something cobbled together in a Word document, for, for example. Uh, and that looks good. Now, he's named that as utility. He could add other rooms onto that, which we'll see later yes. in the show. So if we move on to the next uh, photograph, here's an example of a fire scene one of our team 
um, went to uh, examine. And it's outside. It was a restaurant. And this was uh, a canopy covering a courtyard. So this is photograph is taken from the uh, flat roof on the neighbouring uh, property. And the next photograph will be over the other side of that picture to the right. There's another bit of flat roof there. So if we go to the next photograph, and you can see it looking back. So there's a lot of obstacles in the way, difficult to run a, a tape measure down as such. Uh, this was in the early stages of, of us learning how to use it. So what our, our guy did, if you go onto the next photograph, Sultan, you'll see a hand-drawn sketch. But what he did is he, he did that using the, um, using the laser measurer. And then he came back to the office, which is obviously an option for people to do when they're learning how to do this. And if you go on to the next one, you can see oh, how I see. he's... So that, that's how it ended up in orthograph. That's how it... Yes. Yes. So, but now he's more than competent to do this at the scene. Um, it was just not so common. And I experienced that myself when I first started. Um, the time to learn to do this is not when you're at the scene. You should really should practice this. Right <laughs> That's, now. you know, the site, site visit is not for learning. It's mostly, well, you would use orthograph when you're already confident in it. That's and, right. And yeah. we do understand that there's a learning curve, but that's exactly the reason why we have the YouTube channels or the one-on-one -on -one trainings, what we offer. So uh, it's, it's not the best idea to download the application and hit the scene already. I mean, instantly it's, it takes some time to get used to because that's a new workflow. I mean, if you look at the thing on the left, you see that it's a whole new different kind of sketching. It, exactly. But the, I think the importance that people need to remember is once you've captured it in orthograph, and you can export it and save it accordingly. You've got that data. And what I've not shown on here, Zoltan, I don't know if you've got something to show people afterwards, is below this drawing gives every element of that room. It gives all the aperture openings. It gives, I mean, this is a, a, an outside room. So we'll, we can talk about that in another picture. But it gives a lot more data than just doing the drawing. It gives the volume of the room, it gives the surface areas. And that is very, very important if you're going to do a reconstruction right. for a fire scene. But you, you, you talk about a learning curve. I was uh, having a, a, a Skype conversation with actually your namesake, good friend of mine in Denver, Colorado, uh, Bob Toth, who runs Iris Fire Investigations. And he is, we were discussing your products and he was saying the same thing. He needs to practice uh, before he goes to a scene. Uh, because that's that really not the time to learn, but we're, we're all right. human. So if you go into the next um, uh, image, and this is a, a simple image, you may look at this and say, oh, is that really a fire there's scene? No, there's no fire here. I mean, where... it, it looks like there's no fire, but if you look on the right hand, oh, okay, it's, get it. the sink. it's where a, a kitchen appliance was, and that, that caused a fire. And um, <clears throat> you, can, uh, you can see that it's been taken around. A little bit of fire damage underneath there. But again, we're using this as standard practice at every fire scene now. So if you look uh, at the next photograph, that's taken from the other end. So you can see some smoke damage to the ceiling, but nothing else, um, uh, not a lot of fire damage. If you go on to the, the plan that was done by our, our uh, one of our team, you can see there he hasn't just done the, the room that is involved, He's also done all the other rooms. Oh, okay. That's very, very comprehensive. <laughs> it is comprehensive, and it actually didn't take him long to do. Now, for for anybody to do that at any scene, and this isn't that much fire damage, um, it's time consuming. But to be able to capture that data for our clients is is very important. And if we practice to do this, when it becomes more complicated, we'd be more proficient at doing it. Yes, and, and efficient. So if you move on to the next uh, case, we've got another uh, kitchen where you can see um, something's fallen off the wall. There's a lot of smoke damage here, and you can see the door open uh, at the back and the window on the left. And if we look from the other end, again, a lot of smoke damage. Look through to the back room, not so much smoke damage, some footprints on the carpet. Yes. And if you move on to the uh, sketch that's been done, again, it's only the room of origin, but it's got uh exact dimensions there now obviously what we're going to do is start using the library and putting some of those appliances in there that i know you're developing for us uh we've got the window size there that is very accurate um 
it's like everything. It's like photography. You don't become a good photographer taking your first photograph. You need to practice and practice and become proficient at it. And this is what we're the stage we're at. So we're, we're actually at an early stage, and I'm very pleased with what we're doing. If you move on to the next photograph, this is a, um, a bit more of a complicated scene where it's in a storeroom, and you can see the, the staircase going up to the... Yes. A, a mezzanine floor another storage area which is partially collapsed and through the left hand side you can see a counter a serving counter um, if you go to the next photograph this is the other side of the serving counter so you've got a, you know a, a, a bit of complexity when it comes to measuring if you move to the next slide we're back in that original room of, of the fire's origin and you can see a doorway in the corner going through to a small kitchen area if you move on to the next photograph, we're in that kitchen area, you can see through to a bedroom yes. where the door has been shut. And just a little fire safety plug, please shut your doors when you go to bed at night or you leave the property empty because you can see how that room is totally been protected by a closed yes. door and this fire damage. So this is uh, several rooms. Um, it was uh, um, you know, a messy job. There was collapse and so on. But if you go on to the next slide... And you can see what I did uh, using orthograph. And it probably took about, being realistic, about 30 to 40 minutes mm. to do. But it's got all of the data, more than enough data that I need at the moment. However, um, the window ledges, for instance, have got the sill heights. Like you said, it takes seconds to just put that detail in when you know how to do it. Uh, very, very important. You can see the angles of the wall, everything tied up. This was done literally using my finger on the iPad and a laser measurer. Yes. So very good, very accurate. And if there is an inaccuracy, it stands out. Another part of the learning curve is if you've made a mistake, how do you correct it? But it can all be done. It can all be done. So that, that's a pretty good example. Uh, and I was quite pleased with that drawing Zoltan because that was mine. Um, so if we move on to the next scene... Now, this is a scene where I had to fly overseas. And again, all of these you're by yourself. So you haven't got anybody else to hold the end of a tape measure or, or help you. And this is a disused uh, sort of storage warehouse. And through the window, there's a small office. And you can see that it's proportionally, it's, it's quite long from the front to the back. And that's looking from the front door. Uh, this is looking up towards the back and we can see the, the full ceiling. Oh, sorry, Zoltan. I'm speeding ahead. You're on the next picture. I'll take it. Uh, you can see the the full ceiling is falling down and looking towards the back of the um, of the uh, of the warehouse. And you can see that window on the on the left where the daylight is coming in. You're on you're on that photo, yes, Zoltan. Yes, I see the collapsed ceiling. Yeah, yeah. So and that's important to know exactly where that opening is because that allows air in to feed the fire. Should we want to reconstruct this? in any way so if you go to the next photo result you're looking down to the left hand side it's like a, a funny l upside down l shape and we can see the roof timbers have fallen down and you know you don't really want to be walking in the middle of this but no, you want to know it's uh, that that's where it's it, the laser comes in handy because you don't have to walk all the way or exactly and exactly you can i mean you mentioned in the beginning that you would do this service alone right so you're yes, not often yeah how did you do it before? I mean, did you have to have well, somebody operating the sketch pad and you would be shooting the measurements or, or how would No, that... you'd be doing it yourself. You'd use um, a pad and, and, and a pen or paper uh, and pencil and you would draw the shape and you would either pace it, which isn't that accurate. So you might pace it sort of seven and a half meters and it might end up being depending on the length of your legs, it might end up being eight and a quarter <laughs> or six and a half. So, uh, you know, perhaps it wasn't that accurate or you'd use a tape measure for the windows, but um, a lot more awkward and comes in. It just took longer and wasn't as accurate. That's the issue. Uh, and you, you then would have to come back and produce a drawing in the office to go with your report. Yes. So this, this one we're looking at now, again, I was by myself. Um, and I would think if we move on to the uh, plan drawing, it's very simple, but it is extremely accurate. 
um, it, the office is in the right place. I did that as a separate drawing um, and uh, merged the two together. We've got the apertures and the door openings yes. uh, all there. So, and we've got the, the area um, and on the sheet below that I was talking about that I haven't showed here, it will show the volume as well and all the other features that you capture while you're there. That's right. So that, that, that's important. Um, so they're the brief examples that I've shown you, Zoltan, so that your audience can see what is possible uh, very inexpensively, very efficiently. And it's a benefit to, to the client because you're not spending more time than you need to making this documentation. So you, you said you said that the clients would be would be satisfied seeing this, but can you tell me that I mean you are operating a business, so it all goes down to making money, obviously. Yeah. Can you tell us how Orthograph transformed the way you were working? So did it uh, because your working speed would be would be faster? So did that? Did, how much do the customers see from that? That's what I'm trying to ask. Okay. Well, what what the customer will see is less time at the scene, um, and it. But bear in mind, I just need to say we document things like. Um, uh, kitchen extract ducting systems or commercial ducting air conditioning systems and orthograph can be used for that as well where you need to uh, draw a room with high level duct work in it uh, and measuring it. even the apertures for the cleaning uh, access panels um, you know again uh, you can draw these in and measure them accurately and rather than being at a scene for two hours taking measurements over a large area you could be there for an hour and that reflects on the billing time for your clients because you can reduce that time uh offer a more accurate product and it, the thing is is some of these cases end up in in a court it might be a criminal court or civil court and when you need to reproduce these sketches or recover this data from video or photographs or your plan drawing, you need them to be accurate. So to be able to go back to something six months, a year, five years ago, and have all this data that's been very well documented, uh, just offers resilience to your investigation, as well as efficiency, of course. Efficiency, because especially if you have paper-based sketches, it might happen that you, you can't send it to somebody else because they might not be able to decipher what's going on over there. Where that there is that the, the other thing as well is uh, we um, we needed something that all of our team our 11 investigators can all use and offer the same standard and quality to all of our clients so we have regular clients and new clients but they they get this uh, 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 in much better quality the other thing is is uh, one, one of our partners is BRE the building research establishment where they do computer fine modeling and uh, full scale reconstructions or scale reconstructions, but mainly full scale. So we can export this in a variety of formats and we can export it into their system where they can take all our dimensions and recreate a computer fire model. And that is very, very important that we have that facility to do that. You mentioned that 11 people are using uh, the app in, in your company. Can you tell yes. us? how did it so how did you get them to change from pen and paper because that's getting people from changing from something that they know to something that they don't that's that's a tricky uh, journey so well it is and they're, they're you know uh, a lot of our team have got various uh, levels of experience and some are more uh, sort of it uh, familiar than others um in my former life i was a mechanical engineering draftsman so I understand drawings, but this was still uh, it, this was still new to me to you know get get mad around this concept. So what we did is we supported each other. Um, we said if anybody learns something new, share it. We have weekly uh, Skype meetings every Monday morning. We all talk to each other, and the plan drawing, the orthograph comes up on that conversation, and we do encourage them to use your YouTube videos and to just put that 15, 20 minutes aside, you know, they're not long, just to learn something new on the drawing package. Photography, documenting the scene with sketches is paramount because we say what you leave at the scene, you lose at the scene. <laughs> that's that's, that's a good, good way you know, of approaching we, it. 
it's true. I went to a fire scene just this morning, Zoltan, and um, the building contractors have been in there and taken everything out. So, you know, it was it makes life a lot harder if if you don't capture it. Yes, very especially quick. if if that would make you go back to the scene. That that's basically yeah. a waste of waste of time and money. That that happens. Sure. But that's I mean the the software can't do everything on its own, obviously, and it takes some time to to learn how to use it. But uh, but it could be an enormous time saver. So that's oh. that's the reason why we why we made that. So it it would actually save time and it shortens the time that you spend on the scene so you could spend it on something else. Or since you would be faster, the customers would like your services more than others. So it's actually a competitive advantage uh, as opposed to other companies, which would... There is, there is. And on, on top on of that, uh, uh, again, we don't sacrifice quality for time. Nope. It's just Definitely. do the same thing on the examples I've given you. Um, it is quicker. It, you just can't, you can't make it be the same time because it is quicker. However, once we start progressing to more complicated drawings, where we start going up a level and, and matching up, I'm sure it will still be quicker than the conventional way. But more importantly, is the accuracy of what you're capturing and what you're recording. That is really important. I mean, we export these drawings as a PDF yes. into our file. Yes. And in that PDF, we can either just have that plan or we can have all of the information that it captures at the same time, which I think that that's, you know, people need to uh, be aware of that. That data is very, very important. Good. The volume, the aperture, uh, the ventilation apertures, and so on. Very good. Peter, thank you very much. It was a very comprehensive look at how your company adapted to the to this, this kind of workflow. Obviously, as, as I said before, I said it a couple of times, it takes time to adapt to something new, and yeah. it's, it's way out of the comfort zone of, of, of most people. But if, if in the long run it saves time and it makes your work much more professional than it than it's worth, worth the sacrifice. There's a couple of, uh, couple of questions why we, what we had during this conversation and uh, one of the attendees mentioned that they couldn't properly see one of the images. It's, it's about the, the room which had the, one of the appliances burned out and I'm going to go back to that, uh, that image again so you would be able to, to explain what was going on on that, on that picture. It's the one where the one of the kitchen appliances was burnt out. Okay. If you could just uh, tell us what, what what exactly happened over there, because it wasn't uh, it wasn't that much visible from the. Well, that was the one. So now I have I have the image on the screen where you can see the uh, the kitchen sink and next to it there's a. Okay. It, it it was it was a kitchen appliance that was placed under that sink and the fire occurred within that kitchen appliance, yeah. so. Not a lot of damage, but there is smoke damage there that uh, is more difficult to see in a photograph because uh, all the surfaces would be covered with a, a deposit of, of soot and carbon, uh, which all needs to be cleaned and redecorated. Yes. But that was all that was. It was a kitchen appliance that had caught fire. Thanks. Uh, another another question, what, we, what I just had is that how do we add, because people saw that you were adding appliances and equipment and apertures on the on the floor plan. So I haven't actually showed showed the people that, but we do have something what we call an object library. And this library would have the, the furniture pieces or electrical equipment pieces, what you might see on the scene. So you can just enter this library and, and find whichever item you'd be interested in. Let's say I'm going to add this fridge. And now I can just add this item into the into the floor plan, and this would allow me to sort of position it, remeasure it, and that would actually be a placeholder. Which, whenever I export this into a PDF, this or other kind of export format, this item would be there. So that's that's something what you can use to document the scene. Another another thing is somebody's asking if that if it's possible to add irregular lines and uh, to to mark um, poor lines. Poor patterns. That's actually possible. So you can add yeah. some annotations on the floor plan, but you can use to mark these things. So it is possible to add uh, this kind of freehand, freehand things. Um, yeah, you can also measure those, Zoltan, can't you? You can, you can draw it on, on the plan uh, like a, a free sketch line yes. and you can measure that. So if you are measuring uh, when, when he's talking about a pour pattern, that's if it, an ignitable liquid, for instance, has been poured over the floor and has left a pattern after the fire. Yes. And you want to look at the size of that pour. 
um, then you can measure the from the wall certain points to replicate that that pattern. So and that is possible as well. Another yeah. question: It's it's quite interesting. How how do you document duct work when you are when you're on the on the scene? So how do you document these kind of things? Well, I, I draw it in two, at the moment. I, I'm I'm being totally honest. I draw it in two dimensions, um, but I'll make a note of how deep the duct work is, and I can uh, use the laser measure. You just need it to hit uh, the end of the duct work. So there are sometimes where it's a uh, short enough i may put a bit of board up or i may um put my hand there if it's if it's not that long i can put it up against one part put my hand up at the end of the ductwork and get an accurate measurement uh within the um the aperture of the cleaning uh, access panel uh the the measurer is so small you can just hold it up against one side and measure the aperture quite easily and again, uh, this is something that you can put together in the after work. Yeah, it is. And also, it's something that I think I've discussed with you before, that uh, we need to get to a stage where we're drawing this and then simply showing the the, the bottom uh, surface of that ductwork as a dimension from the floor, because the beautiful thing about um, the drawings, which I've done since uh, this small presentation, is where you can just convert it into a 3D image. And that's very impressive, uh, should you need to do that, to give some perspective of, of where something is, particularly ductwork, for instance. There's another interesting question. Uh, people are asking about how you can uh, how you can draw individual walls or L-shaped or any kind of weirdly shaped uh, items in, in the floor plan. Now, this is, a, this is a facility, this is a feature of what we are going to develop. You would be able to, and Peter, in, uh, you have seen this, you know how hotspots work. Yes. So what, yep. what you can do is that you can place down these hotspots, hotspots as uh, as placeholders, and then later then you can connect the dots in any kind of processor what you're using if it's if it's CAD or Microsoft Word even or a PDF editor. So this is a thing for which you can mark the exact position of, and then you can connect these points um, in in some kind of uh, kind of after work. Um, that's that's actually. Most of the oh, uh, people are asking about custom objects in the object library. If you are able to import your own blocks and ob object into the object library, at this moment it is not not possible. What you can do is that you can resize and sort of customize the objects what we have. So you can resize them, you can position them, you can rotate them, and also by going into the properties you can add certain elements to them. So you can say that this is actually not a placeholder box, but it's actually a, um, a light switch or, or other kind of item but in the long run we are we are planning to be able to so you would be able to create your own blocks or even import them from other applications so that 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 would be another step but it's not uh, at the moment it's not done yet so you would need to work with the library what we have but based on customer feedback based on people's feedback like you yourself we are trying to incorporate as many blocks into the the um the application as possible so most of the client needs would be answered that way i think it's also worth uh, just highlighting what you've said there sultan about using um the feedback if people contact you enough and say uh, you know you get a lot of feedback look we'd really like to see this type of television yes. for instance yeah. shape could you incorporate that in the library that is something that that you could you could do um and also about the thickness of walls, all of those elements you can open up and you can size those elements accordingly, whether it's the walls, doors, windows, types of windows. Um, so it's, it's very versatile. Yeah, so you can actually customize everything. But then again, it all goes that, uh, down to time spent on the scene. If you are not concerned about the individual properties of the walls, you don't have to submit this data. You can just go and, and sketch and measure and you would walk away with, with very accurate 2D information. But if you take the time to measure up the ceiling height, then you can get accurate data on volume and, and uh, other information bits. So that would be yeah. the idea. It all, it's all based on uh, how much time you are, you are willing to, willing to uh, spend on the scene. There's another question regarding columns. And that's obviously a very important issue because you, you showed me pictures of, of scenes which had support beams. Um, and we do have objects which would which could represent the columns and the pillars which were there before the fire uh, struck. But also you can mark the the uh, support beams which you have to install after the this this uh, the fire happened. So we have in our object library certain uh, structural elements 
Let me just go back to the structural pieces where I could just find it. It's uh, it's among the object library. We'll be able to find an element which would be. We do have staircases and we do have all kinds of other things, but we we have a column as well and a circular and a rectangular one. At the moment, I'm not able to find them, but it's there in the system. You just have to find among these these dots. You would be able to enter them. You would be able to resize them and shape them into the the way you want. Yeah. So we do we do have those facilities as well. Um, I think these were the these were the questions what what I what I uh, had to answer. Uh, quite a few questions actually on our YouTube channel. So a lot of a lot of traffic going on. But that's that's what I wanted to show you actually. Um, I think what we wanted to discuss regarding Peter's perspective and what I wanted to, to show you about the orthograph now is, is something that we already discussed. There's, a, there's one thing what I want to call our attendees' attention to is that we are running a, a special promotion where um, attendees of this, of this webinar would be sent a link to a questionnaire which they can fill out. This questionnaire is based on, on things, what you like about the application and what are the things what you, what you still would welcome as, as a feature. And this is a very valuable information pack because we can use that for further development. And as a as a thank you, we are going to run a, all the all the uh, all the attendees who are filling a discussion would enter a prize draw, and the winner could win an orthograph one one year subscription and a Leica Disto D2 laser distance meter as a package, which would be shipped wherever they are. So they could be using the app for a year without any, any charge. Uh, they would be also qualified for a training, uh, one of one-to-one -one training with me, actually, to show them how the application works. They would be getting this nice little gadget with it. Send me, send me one of those forms, I'll send. <laughs> yes, yes, you, you will get one, no worries. <laughs> good good thing are. we have we have this to to hand out so i'll you you'll get you'll get your your link there's actually uh okay uh there's another question sorry i'm just uh, getting off topic now um if i could go back to the refrigerator and show how it would be placed into the drawing and appear to scale so what happens here is that i i placed this uh fridge before and let me just go back. So this is the fridge in question, what we, what we had. And I will be able to rotate it and also I would be able to resize it. So you can see that there's a size box where you can actually modify the size of, the, of this element. Uh, but this applies to all the objects what we have. So you would be able to resize them any way you want. That's, but that's just something that came up. All the objects come with a, with a default size in our object library, you can, you can resize them. Back to our promotion. So after this seminar, you are going to get all the, the link, fill up the questionnaire, send it back, and make sure that you give us the ideas what you have, because that, that is what keeps us going, the ideas and feedback what the users have. And all the, all the feedback, if it's positive or negative, would help us to stay on target, because that's the only way we can customize application, this application to support what you need. Because we wouldn't know what exact professions are looking for, but your feedback would be able to tell us. That's what I wanted to discuss in this uh, second uh, installment of our webinar series. Peter, thank you very much for, for joining in and, and, and getting us, us through with our um, experiences and, and the lessons you learned. Thank you very much for all of you to join in and uh, stay tuned for the next edition of the webinar. You are going to be sent information on that too uh, shortly. And I'm looking for the forms to be submitted soon. Thank you very much, Peter and the others. Hope to see you next time. Thank you.